And every time I've slept with somebody, they've never wanted to cover up. You know, we just walked around naked after we got done handling up. We just handled our business. You know, we're, we're vulnerable, you know. And yeah, ladies, she would get up and just walk around and, you know, boogalooing all over the place. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not complaining. But she wraps up in a little sheet like, you know, I don't want you seeing my grits. I just fucked you. What you mean you don't want me seeing your grits? Like you said, I was all up in your grits, bitch. Like, come on. Alright y'all, it's Halloween. Happy Halloween to everybody. And I guess for Halloween, Lamar decided to dress up as Omar and go on a fucking killing spree. BMF Season 1, Episode 6. So I thought like most star shows, they go on a, a mid-break or whatever. Like after five episodes, they take a break, like have a bye week and then come back for the rest. But nah, they're gonna go nine straight episodes, no break. I'm here for it. So let's get into this Episode 6. Only thing I can say about this episode, y'all, the only thing... That sticks out to me is Lamar. Lamar has lost his motherfucking mind. And and I get it. His daughter was kidnapped. He had a good thing going with the baby mama. Meech fucked all that up. So now this nigga's off on the deep end. We're even Slick. R.I.P. Slick. Slick even tried to get away from his motherfucker. Now mind you, Slick ain't no soft nigga. But even he was like, yo, I gotta get rid of I gotta get it. I gotta get away from this crazy ass fool, man. And damn, stuck him. Singing, you can't stop the rain. You can't stop the rain from falling. Listen, when I, when I saw him do this shit, I would have ran the fuck out of there. Fuck the clothes. Look, I got enough money. I can go to Kmart or whatever was around back then, and I can buy some more clothes. Get the fuck away from that nigga right there, as he done lost his goddamn mind. So, yeah, Lamar is dolo now. Like I said, he's on his Omar shit. He has no crew because Meech uh, paid your boy off. I don't know what the fuck his name is. I don't know if they ever said his name on the show, but the guy that was under Lamar, now he's the top dog because Meech... Gave him a brick, and um, he had the whole crew turn on Lamar, so now he's the top dog, but not for long if he don't go with, along with what Meech is trying to do. So he loses his crew. He lo he ain't got shit to lose. He got nothing to lose, which is scary. A, a nigga that got nothing to lose is scary. So he says, all right, I realize the most important thing to me is family. You know, your family. Your family. So to get back at Meech, I'm going to kill somebody that he loves so he can feel the pain that I feel. And so he goes after Nikki, the little sister, and kills the boyfriend, Darius. R.I.P. Darius, man. Two bodies, Darius and um and Slick. I feel bad for Darius because, you know, that was his first girlfriend and shit, first kiss and all. He was all bashful. You know, just that teenage love shit. And he dies because of Nikki's big brothers, you know. And matter of fact, if I was Darius, I would have ran, first of all, when, when Terry walked in on them and they was about to kiss, right? And <laughs> Terry was like, look. Hey, you seem like a nice kid, but get the fuck out of here. I would have stepped off then. I, I wouldn't have went back. Look, at, there, there's been some girls that I uh, skipped out on dating because of the older brother. You know, there, there was one chick that I really wanted to be with, but I was afraid of her brother because her brother had the biggest fucking knuckles I've ever seen in my life. And he was cool with me, but there was a rule back then, you know, you never dated your homeboy's sister. So I left, in there. I left her alone. I ain't fuck with her. So he should have ran then. Lamar, oh my God, he he's got to go. I, listen, I, I love him as a character, as a villain, but he just crossed the fucking line. You know what I mean? And he's Dolo now, so you figure he's at a disadvantage, but he's probably more dangerous now, Dolo, than he is with the crew because he just doesn't give a fuck anymore. <sighs> Moving on, Terry. <laughs> so Terry. I felt bad for this episode because Terry's got one foot in the drug game and one foot in the legit world. He he wants to do something with his life. You know what I mean? He wants to go to college. He wants to do, he wants to live a, a clean life. You know what I'm saying? But he can't because he's in this shit with his brother. And you can tell he resents it. You know what I'm saying? Like when he was going off on the crew, like he resents this shit, but it's like he's in it and he's good at it. He's very fucking good at it, but his heart really is not in it. You know what I mean? But of course that's going to change because... As this show goes on, I mean, a blind man can see that he's going to, you know, leave the legit world behind and go all in with this shit with his brother. And it's kind of sad because he has so much potential to be better than that. Even his parents saw that, you know, that was kind of a heartbreaking scene when, uh, you know, his parents was questioning him, like, how long you been doing this shit for, you know, and and you kind of felt it. But still, you know, it's like, yeah, OK, but still, you know, even though, yeah, I know you wanted more and, you know, what she say, poverty is not an excuse for immor immorality or some shit like that, she said, you know, and yeah, that's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't use it as an excuse, but hey, everybody has a reason for doing what they do. 
At the same time, Meech is trying to get his own connect with his nigga Q, which was set up by your boy who, I don't know his name, but the guy that he had turned on Lamar to him, and he has to kind of prove himself to this cat. So now, uh, so I guess Meech is with this Q guy now, but then Terry still has Big L on this end. You know what I'm saying? You already know what's going to happen with that, <laughs> you know? And uh, last thing I want to say about this episode is um is Mickey and uh what's his name Kato all right now the one the one thing I'm gonna complain about this episode is we didn't get to see Kato's grits girl why did you cover up I mean hey she probably camera shy and shit you know some actresses don't want to show their goodies on camera I guess she's one of them but yeah you just got done you know screwing this dude with the bird chest and you get up and you wrap yourself up in a sheet now mind you. I've I've gotten asked before, you know, it's probably hard to believe, but I have got asked before, and every time I've slept with somebody, they've never wanted to cover up, you know, we just walked around naked after we got done handling up, we just handled our business, you know, we're, we're vulnerable, you know, and yeah, ladies, she would get up and just walk around and, you know, boogalooing all over the place, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> I'm not complaining, but she wraps up in a little sheet like, you know, I don't want you seeing my grits, I just fucked you, what you mean you don't want me seeing your grits, like you said, I was all up in your grits, bitch, like, come on. Yeah, so that was my, my one complaint, man. I didn't get to see Kato in, and I know what you're saying. Rashad, you're so perverted. You're so nasty. Listen, lay. sometimes I'm a nasty motherfucker. Right? So it is what it is. Kato is sexy as fuck. She fine as hell. All right? I want to see them grits. I want to see them cakes. God damn it. Let me grab a cake. So Mickey is in love. This B Mickey nigga is in love. You know, she got him sprung. And so he found that shit on her own. I guess he found the note at her place. Um, written by, I believe that was Lamar, you know, but she said that's the ex-boyfriend and that's why she was hiding out with him. So now this nigga has in his head like, okay, she got a stalking ass ex-boyfriend who I got to check. And, oh Lord, you know what? Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of B. Mickey's character, man, but I, I know the feeling of being pussy whipped and you don't realize how stupid you look till afterwards. You know, I've been there, done that. So yeah, she, she's going to be his downfall. And now she's even encouraging him to have his own thing. Because right now, you know, they're all kind of free agents. You know what I'm saying? Like, Terry and Meech now are like the new Pat, okay? These guys are like Meech and them coming up in the game. So it's like, here, we're no longer the, the um, I almost said D12. <laughs> we're no longer the, the 12 boys or whatever, you know what I'm saying? This is, we're going we're gonna to give you this shit. You do what you do as long as you give us our cut, as long as you pay our price. You do what the fuck you want to do, how you want to do. We don't care. You know, y'all y'all free agents now. But B. Mickey's like, listen, I've been with these niggas for the longest. I feel like a third wheel. And um, I want more respect. I want more responsibility. You know, she's like, yes, you can. You can do it. And that's all he needs is for her to encourage him. And now he's going to feel like Tony Montana take it down Frank. But what's going to end up happening is it's going to be like Sosa. And he's going to fuck himself up. And that's it. And that's all. Cool episode, man. Yeah, Lamar, he's crazy as fuck. He's, he's got to be stopped eventually. And um, that's all I got, man. What y'all think about the episode? Comment freely below. Let me know what you thought. And uh, if you like and dig this content, hit that like and subscribe notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video.